myself. That was like trying to dig a treasure out of a box. All right. <clears throat> Welcome to another episode of Eat Smoke Drink. Today I am going to review the Johnny Walker Blue. Oh, wait for it. Okay, Johnny Walker Blue Port Allen. So Johnny Walker Blue Port Allen has been legendary um, because it has Port Allen in it. Little background, every time someone mentions Port Allen, people tend to get excited and aroused and bust a nut or a she nut, whatever. Everyone gets excited about Port Allen, Port Allen. Why? Why is Port Allen so exciting for people? Well, it's because it's a closed distillery, it's Isla, and it's extremely expensive. But the thing is, just like anything that becomes finite and quote unquote rare, is it really worthwhile? Look, I've had a couple of Port Allens before, not a huge amount, and yeah, it's good, but you know, is it worth the price you pay for it? I guess it all depends on what your budget is like. I think that, oh, what does it say? Oh, it says Port Allen, Oban, Blair Athol, Mortlock, Del Yoon, Cragamore, Caledonian, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight different whiskies in here. So seven eight so it actually has the different whiskies it looks like that's in there but anyway johnny walker blue is a blended whiskey at 40 percent the standard johnny walker blue if you haven't seen it before my review of it is very scathing it's taking the piss it is absolutely atrocious um okay let me rewind back let me take a breather um it's atrocious because it's 40 percent it's atrocious because of the price point you're paying for it and it's a waste of good single malts this one here is 43.8%. So 43.8% is actually quite a bit more. It's about 10% more alcohol per volume. Um, and it has Port Allen in it. Um, and yeah, so let's see if it's worth let's see if it's worth the hype. I mean the bottle is immaculately presented always when you go to duty free or wherever the you know the presentation box is it's always really phenomenal, always an, exper an experience when it comes to Johnny Walker. So the question is, you know, what matters is inside this, is it worthwhile? So let's get nosing, let's get tasting. Look, I really, I can tell you right now, there's a distinct difference between this and your standard Johnny Walker, and I'll tell you what it is. It is a heftiness on the nose a heavy weight on the nose straight away straight away metallic minerally meaty salty a little bit heavy on the tannin now i'm not sure if this is chill filtered i'm not sure if this is colored but it probably is johnny walker but on the nose straight away i'm telling you it's different it's fruity it's earthy it's soily it's minerally it's heavy it's meaty, a little bit of salt, and I really, really like that. Now, if if these are actually what's in it, it says it is in it, other rare, mal rare malts from Mortlock, Dalyun, Cragamore, then that's excellent, and that's where the heaviness comes from, because Mortlock and Cragamore are worm tubs. They're heavy, heavy spirits. Dalyun is similar to Klein Leash, so Dalyun is rumored to be replacing Klein Leash and Johnny Walker's, I got a similar waxy nose and a fruity nose and a honey honeycomb like nose. Blair Athol, one of my favorites, heart malt of Bell's whiskey, um, and Oban, smoky and heavy and and, and a sooty, coaly, fire smoke flavor to it as well. And then it has two other ghost distilleries and Port Allen for the smoke. So I get it. I get exactly what they're trying to do. I get exactly what they're trying to do. The nose is excellent, so let's go through that. The smoky, earthy, wet leather, fresh tanned leather, green foliage, fresh cut shrubs, 
Like when you just trimmed your hedge. Burnt sugar. Baby talc. A slight note of fresh wood varnish. A hint of bacon fat. Crayons. Humidor cedar. Pencil lead, graphite. Wow, the nose is excellent. I'm gonna be completely honest. I am, I am taken aback by the, the excellent nose, by the excellent nose. I mean, I, I, no, I'll be honest, the nose is excellent. The nose is excellent. Um, the blending is, the blending is faultless. It's absolutely faultless. I, I can't bitch about it, the blending of it, like the nose, um, it's, it's fantastic. And I'm surprised, I'm surprised, pleasantly surprised, and at the same time shocked and disturbed. Let's get tasted. Mmm, licorice, licorice, herbs, tarragon, rosemary, Wow, it's like a bouquet of herbs. Freshly watered vegetable patch, you know, like a soil. Just a hint of it. Smoke. It's got a good hint of smoke in there. Burnt sugar. It's got a savory note to it. I'm going to say that it is a Dutch licorice. Definitely normal soft licorice and a salty Dutch licorice. Underripe stone fruit. I'm picking apricot. A slight sourness, a slight astringency of apricot. You know when it's still crunchy and it's not sweet. It's got a, it's got a lingering metallic note to it as well. Steely steely like you know like when you touch the metal part of a something and you and you've got that metallic rusty smell a bit of jägermeister in there it's a medicinal it's a very herbal very medicinal I'm gonna say it outright. What a surprise. 43.8, that extra 3.8% alcohol from the blue label makes a world of difference. And obviously the blending of it is probably different as well. I mean, it won't be the same as blue label. This is much rarer, but I can tell. This is a great whiskey. It's a great whiskey, but it's even greater that it's a blue label whiskey. <laughs> um, I'm not trying to be funny. But I'm not a fan of Blue Label, but this does live up to the hype, so to speak, slightly. Actually, quite a lot. I'm surprised by it. Um, I didn't expect it to be that compelling and delicious. I mean, I don't know if it's chill filtered or not. It probably is. But the, the mouthfeel was done right. That could be from the Mortlock and Cragamore. The finish is medium, medium to long which I'm surprised with for a 43.8% and a Johnny Walker. Um, absolutely fantastic. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this whiskey. I think that um, the, marketing, the marketing matches the hype. It is quite expensive though, so keep that in mind. Um, it's probably about, I think, four or $500 um, retail, uh, maybe even more. Um, but compared to the blue label, I just wouldn't even touch the blue label. But this actually does have a bit of substance. It has a bit of soul. Actually, I'll take that back. This has substance. This has soul. Um, it, they've retained the soul. They've retained the characters. 
and uh, they've done justice to the distilleries they've listed here because I love Mortlock, I love Cragmore, Barathol is one of my favourites, Port Allen is always novelty, Oban is one of the most underrated distilleries um, I find and they've done it all justice. This whiskey has been blended masterfully, masterfully and you know, and I don't say that lightly actually, I don't say that lightly, um, you know, I think in the last couple of years hundreds and hundreds of whiskies we've tried and I will tell you now that this does live up to that hype so to speak and um, it is by no way disappointing. Um, until next time make sure you eat smoke drink and for cigar pairings. My cigar pairings I would say this is ballsy enough to actually withstand a good Maduro, um, a good strong Cuban, maybe a Trinidad Cuban, nothing too strong but spicy with the herbal notes and uh, with the medicinal notes I think a, uh, a Trinidad Cuban would be fantastic. Um, I would even say a, um, a Maduro, maybe um, a Arturo Fuente Maduro would be quite nice with this whiskey. Until next time, I should eat smoke drink and see you again.